Happy morning, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to the floors of Shashwat Academy to the next revision series of Learn as quick as much as possible. Let's start. Today's topic is GSTP. Who is eligible to apply for a GSTP? First one, he should satisfy the basic qualities, and the basic qualities is four. Point number one, he must be an Indian citizen. I see. Two, he must be having a sound mind. SM. Three, he must be he must not be declared insolvent, so not insolvent. NI. And last. he must not be convicted in a court of law so nc so these are the four basic qualification in addition to that additional qualification specified which is education qualification but education qualification is not a criteria for two of the special category practitioners two of the special category people first one is ex government official and second one is ex practitioners let's take government official what is the requirement for them a retired commercial tax officer cto or a retired cbic officer who served as a group b guested officer for a minimum period of 2 years he is eligible without considering any of the education qualification and the ex practitioner is concerned whoever is practiced in the old law for a minimum period of 5 years for a period not not less than 5 years they are eligible without any education requirement but when it comes to other than these two ex category people they should possess any degree of commerce stream any degree of commerce stream but science graduate science basis will not be entertained so upon satisfying this two qualifications one is basic and then education they are they have to make an application in pct01 a proper officer can approve this or he can reject this and on what grounds they may reject if the proper officer believes that the qualification is not sufficient or it is not qualified improper qualification he can reject but if he is approving he will make an approval order in pct02 and once approved my dear please appreciate this particular person who made an application point number 1 will be called as a gstp point number 2 his application is valid for the entire india all over india meaning thereby it's a centralized registration one registration for all over india and number 3 it is valid until it's getting cancelled but subject to passing the nasin examination what is this nasin examination every person who has made an application and approved as gstp they have to pass an examination conducted by nasin n a c i n national academy for customs indirect taxation and the narcotics they are the only authorized person to conduct this examination within 30 months of the from the date of approval from the 30 within 30 months from the date of approval they have to satisfy they have to pass this examination and what are the feature, features of this examination nasin will conduct this examination twice in a year they will publish this detail in their website newspaper and vernacular newspapers as well along with cbic website and you have to register for this by paying 500 rupees examination fees and you have to register on nasin.onlineregistration.com online you have to go and do it and this syllabus is entire gst law and procedures cgst sgst igst utgst notifications orders circulars everything is a forming part of the syllabus and it's a computer based 100 mark mcq paper of which no negative mark is there that's one thing which you have to appreciate them and uh, 50 marks is a pass mark so out of 100 questions if you answer 50 questions correct you have passed this examination and there is no restriction of number of attempts in this 30 months you can write any number of examination which comes across if at all due to unforeseen circumstances if you are forced to miss one examination you can get that one additional examination attempt by making an application to the jurisdictional commissioner within 30 days of the conduct of the examination and if the commissioner approves you can write one additional examination and after doing this all can he be removed or surrendered yes he can be removed for doing any wrong mischief activities which is basically the grounds of misconduct and what is the procedure before removing he will be given a show cause notice by the proper officer and he will be asked to reply for that after considering the reasons he will be removed he will be removed an order of removal will be passed in pct04 and can he surrender voluntarily yes a man can opt out of gstp by making an application in pct06 and proper officer after investigating the grounds and satisfied he will pass and remove a order allowing the person to surrender the gstp in pct07 this is from the origin to exit entry to exit of life cycle span of pct during this life cycle a gstp will do what he will be doing the following functions for a registered person if authorized for doing all these functions a gstp has to be authorized by a registered person in pct05 have it in back of mind so what are the functions a registered person can be assisted by this gstp he can be assisted in doing the following compliance activity number 1 to furnish the details of outward and inward supply details number 2 furnishing the returns which is basically monthly quarterly these are called as periodical and also annual return and then he can facilitate the registered person in depositing electronic cash ledger cash in electronic cash ledger and he can raise the evable and he is he can he can also submit the details of goods sent 
to the job worker which is itc04 in addition to that these are all for a registered person and this one is not for, this one for an unregistered transporter who enrolled in enable portal for the purpose of rule 58 to amend or cancel his enrollment and all these intimations and all these intimations all this furnishing of records will be intimated to the registered person by way of mail or sms upon furnished by the gstp and this registered person who authorized all these activities to be performed by the gstp can approve or he need not act but if he has not approved within the due date it is deemed to be approved for the sixth category it is deemed to be approved by the due date and for the balance three activities it's going to be very sensitive he can make the gstp can make an amendment or you know cancellation of registration he can opt in and opt out of composition scheme on behalf of the registered person and he can make a request for refund claim Upon this three requests, upon this three requests, intimation will be to the sent to the registered person. My dear, here's a small difference. Unless the registered person approves these three, it is not deemed to be furnished by the registered person. And what is the duties and responsibilities? While executing all these tasks, first one you have to do is a GSTP has to take the authorization from the registered person in PCT05. He has to execute all his functionalities with due diligence and uh, he has to file this in, all these information using his digital signature the gstp's digital signature using he has to file this and while representing the client in any of their authorities if the proper authority requires the gstp has to furnish a pct05 copy duly signed by him and with respect to registered person what are the precautions you know do's and don'ts the registered person have to do one he has to authorize he can appoint more than one person for the multiple you know functions listed over here meaning thereby one gstp for furnishing this one gstp for furnishing available one gstp for finding refine claim he can appoint any number of gstp for the specified services and he can also remove the gstp if he doesn't require and finally the in principle responsibility of ownership of any details furnished by the gstp is rested with rp meaning thereby who is responsible for the details furnished by gstp it is the registered person and this is a small summer provision of the concept called GSTP for your examination purpose my dear and remember the surrendering of GST concept is yet to be notified and RP here everywhere I used RP and RP stands for registered person so broadly divided this topic into four categories eligibility procedures and then functions and duties and responsibilities hope you you will be enjoying this revision process and I'll come back to one more topic of your choice have excellent and useful learning. Good day, my dear brothers and sisters.